pedal wise every single model is ever so slightly different okay. in regards to where the pedal arrangement is if the pedal's too high slightly lower slightly on a you know, bigger bigger gap it's a c63 typically i find the pedal is about an inch more to the left so closer to the brake every single model is different so the best thing to do have a quick flip on just go and brake the gas a few times make sure you're happy um, quite often the most common technique for using those pedals is to go from the brake and people slide their foot to the gas that's no issue at all oh, but the problem is it's when people slide their foot back to the brake rare. <laughs> they, they tend to catch their feet on the edge of the brake arm and it can in the heat of the moment make you feel like your foot's stuck to the gas oh, and it's not it's just you've got to do a bit of an up and over job uh, now if you, you, if you do that then you've got no problem at all and if, you, if, you, if your feet are that small they can actually go between the two pedals um, and go underneath the brake which is always an interesting one. But yeah. It feels like someone's grabbed your foot then. But it's only happened once to me and the person had like size four feet. Oh wow. So yeah, you need like child size feet to accidentally go between them. Chances are not it's not gonna happen. But so yeah, if you're okay with that. But yeah, if you're happy with that, it's column shift, it'd be the same as the previous ones you drove, so the gear paddles up on the right hand side. Oh, oh right. so like, do you know what? I've been yeah. so, yeah, so used yeah, to these new style. Yeah, yeah. Um so yeah, please just point it out. The new style for these ones, C63, will be that. And actually, it's quite nice that they've gone back to it. The GTR, yeah, it's got it down there, it on, yeah. but it's about half a size. Yeah, it's like, but it's really far back. Yeah. It's like this. Yeah, it's really far back. It's, it's like you find yourself like that. Yeah, it's not a that job. It's there. Um, if you ever saw a CLK Black series, it was, it was or a detail, weird, same yeah, thing. Yeah, they got a really tiny weird. little exact same style. So there's something about it. Whatever it is. It's that size and it's right far back here. <laughs> but yeah, the, the DTM, that, that was a cool little car. But if you're happy with that, we can get you yeah. So we'll click it in drive. And uh, we'll head around the front. And we need the hazard lights on just for the kind of oh. beginning stretch. Yeah, that's it, we go straight past this guy. So, we'll just curve around to the left hand side. So, we've got this one main road, everything we do is kind of linked off of this. It's the only section with any kind of speed limits as such, uh, 30 mile per hour road. Yeah. The main reason, to be fair, the limits are in place is it's the only section that is actively two way. Okay. Everywhere else, Pretty much on my direction. Things for okay. That's my disclaimer. Um, okay. But yeah, this one now, some people are encouraged that when they finish that zone there, they curve around the top and then come back towards you. It isn't much of a problem, but we do find uh, you get a lot of scenarios like someone's flown over from another country, got a taxi to the hotel, first time they've driven, it's the following day, which is today for them, oh, well. and they're used to being on this side of the, of the car and that side of the road. When you go abroad, it's so easy to go into your own thing and yeah. you're on the wrong side of them, but you're thinking, why is everyone flashing me? Uh, yeah, we're going to go left into here. Is there like an indicating it? To be fair, if there's no one behind you, I wouldn't yeah, worry too much. Um, if there's blatantly people there, it's worth it, just so they have half an idea what you want to do. Um, so we can kind of cut around to the left hand side. And now, the track itself, you typically find, you know, the general rule of thumb, the more narrow the circuit, slow it is okay. yeah because if it's motorway width that means you've got a lot of room when you can throw the car in and let it run wide if it's only as wide as a typical street the speed is reduced it's all okay. um, so this track itself is a little bit narrow the, the north track over the slightly larger one that is a tiny bit wider but in general these resemble handling facilities okay. handling circuits where okay. cars are typically designed and put through there paces to see what's going to break I like this it's very tight twisty non-stop corners so it actually treats the car quite hard it's not like uh, and you look at somewhere like the, uh, the national show it's, yeah. it's like now it's like the proven ground isn't it for a, yeah, it for is, a car to be yeah. classed as successful they go to the noise line now do their quick lap and go did it whatever 642 that's, that's yeah. that car it's like it's that's its branding now. What lap did it get at that track? 
and actually wasn't the um, the GTR the fastest rear wheel drive car around the North Shore for a while at least? Yeah, it was, wasn't it, for a little while, it did hold the record. The thing is, if you top fine, records get beat really yeah. quick around there. <laughs> they don't last. No. They never seem to last that long at all. And as outrageous as they look, another car comes out. And it'll be some prototype. Of course, yeah, like the, um, there was an XCS V as well. Yeah. And then, um, was it an electric car recently that went around there and it had oh, the bullets and everything? Yeah, yeah. Full electric, wasn't it? Not, not even like a hybrid, it was all electric. And it was oh, the equivalent of like 1500 horsepower, oh. but uh, 2000 newton meters torque. Wow, 2000. Yeah, four wheel drive. So, but that, it's really heavy as well with batteries. Though, yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. That level of torque, that's okay. It can have a four wheel drive. But if you're just rear wheel drive, that's a, that's a lot to put through. And over a length of a track like that, you'd be cooking those rears fast. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And uh, of course they have overheating issues with their batteries, don't they? Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. When you're, um, the quicker you ask for the power, the hotter they get. Of course, yeah. So if you're just running around normally, they'll get warm, don't get me wrong. But they do heat up by giving power. Equally, they heat up and charge them. Oh, of course, It's just, yeah, it's just yeah. their, uh, the nature of what they do. I'm, I'm quite curious what um, AMG will do with their uh, future V8 hybrid powertrain, because yeah. There's a bit of a problem there with, I mean, I'm looking, thinking about the cars like the um, the Panamera. It's great, but it's really heavy. So I'm, yeah. I'm just curious, like, what will AMG do with the weight? Yeah, it's very true. But I think it's it's naturally coming, isn't it? You look at every car yeah. that comes out, it's got the hybrid element and it's trickling more yeah, and more into them. Ones you might not have ever thought you'd see. Yeah, sports cars, supercars. But they use obviously for power, don't they? Like yeah, they, they almost use like a Kurz device. Uh, like oh the, yeah, like the yeah, yeah. You look yeah. at the um, yeah, the McLaren P1, Porsche 918. Uh, what's the um, what's the Ferrari's version? The uh, oh LaFerrari. Yeah, the LaFerrari. That yeah. that's that's got a hybrid power, but, but use for power delivery rather than saving up to drive eco. Yeah. yeah, I'm not interested in the eco stuff. I just I love the performance gains, but. As long as they can keep the weight down. Yeah, it will come. Battery technology will is increasing like daily. Yeah. You, if you watch any of the Formula E. Yeah, I've seen a bit of Formula E. Yeah, yeah, so that's a good kind of. Uh, it shows you really just how fast it's advancing. If you go back to its first couple of seasons, perhaps even the third year, the batteries wouldn't last. They, they were changing cars. Yeah. In between, I mean, how's that eco? Yeah, no. You've got to have two cars. I definitely prefer petrol power. <laughs> yeah, and now the batteries. Now last the whole race, oh. and they could keep them hard, longer power for the whole race, rather than okay, it will last the whole race. Put the battery down. Oh. Now they're quicker than ever, and they last. Well, and the batteries are made by McLaren. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So it's one big um, central kind of box of them. I guess yeah. like a pack. I guess it's sort of yeah, they're all McLaren made. Wow. So you think in two years they've gone from they last 50 percent, now they last 100 percent of the race. Give it another year or two, perhaps more power, perhaps half a week. So it will naturally come into these vehicles as well. Before you know it, you'll probably find most AMGs like next generation engines will yeah. be slightly downsized but have a electrical element uh, that just boosts the power to what it is now, yeah. but at a three litre, uh, no longer five which, and a half. In this. Which means no more V8s. Uh, well, unfortunately, I think the V8 is a, it's a funny engine, isn't it? Because V12s have been absolutely killed off. Yeah. Not many vehicles use them at all. Maybe it's the V12 now. Yeah, you don't, don't need nothing really, is it? Yeah. It might be some bespoke sports company. Yeah. But that's about it. V10s. I don't think any, is it? No, but uh, Lamborghini. Lam yeah, Lamborghini. Yeah. A guy out of a V10. Yeah. But. but I mean, that, I guess that's about it, really. they also use V12s, but I mean, everyone else is using V8s. So yeah, and no, 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 no. so now it's all about V8. Yeah. Uh, obviously, BMW. In the M power cars gone back to the straight six. Yes. Nice. Funny how they've gone back. They were straight six. Yeah. They were in V8. <laughs> now the bunch straight six again. I mean, it's mostly all just emissions, though, isn't it? Yeah, that's all it's about. Yeah. It's literally about emissions. The new M, which is ridiculous. Just, so the new M2. Uh, the the engine that was in it last year actually would would now fail the new Euro rules. Oh. I don't know Euro six or anywhere, but. Six or oh seven. yeah, you're a seven. Yeah, yeah. would actually fail those rules on the missions. Oh, so what they've done, 
the new M3 engine is actually better on emissions than the M2 engine. So they put the new M3 engine in the M2. Yeah, of course they have, yeah. So the M2 is even quicker now than what it was before and better on emissions. But then they have a, a new engine to replace that as well. It's um, code name B54 or something. Oh, no, I'm not sure. Yeah. It's, I mean, another straight six, but yeah, it's to replace this current one because the current one has reliability issues or something. Oh, uh, right, okay. Yeah, it's engine, maybe. They probably have. I know uh, the last time I spoke to someone in the engine department, he works for the, the M side of things. Oh, oh. He was saying there that they're having a few issues with it. It's to do with the turbos because they, they're twin turbo, but actually there's a third turbo. <laughs> That's well, yeah, okay. There's a third turbo there that doesn't actually, it's nothing to do with drawing in air. Okay. It spools up turbo one. Oh, okay. and that's it. Just to get rid of the lag. Yeah, sole job is to turn turbo one. And then turbo one actually does all the drawing of the air. Uh, it's the size of a bottle cap lid. <laughs> and uh, it's, its tick over is 80,000 RPM. Wow. <laughs> so by it being so small, 80,000 RPM is just ticking over. Just it, like starting to come into, into play. And it spins it up to something like 150,000 RPM. But that comes at a price wear and tear. Oh, nice. And apparently that's where the issues are. These little gremlins they're fighting on the engines. It's to do along those lines. Well, wow. when people have reported like annoying amounts of lag and it, oh, it wasn't lagging last week. That's what it is. That third turbo, I mean, what you could say is technically turbo one. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like, um, I mean, they might as well just get. Use um, electric turbos then. Gonna yeah, be exactly, and that's already out, isn't it? You can actually yeah. buy the first version of it. The first consumer version is available now. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. just like an F1 car would have oh. uh, electrical turbos. So no lag, no mechanical, something else trying to turn it. It's yeah, just a motor. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. So he's already. I think actually, it was last year I saw that in a magazine, and it was outrageous. It was like eight thousand quid. Wow, eight thousand. Like, like. They always expect, but something brand spanking new. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, I bet it's four. Next year, be two. Because there's probably yeah. ten other companies now selling it. But yeah, it was the first one with a big old like, booster pack on it, a big thick copper cables. And they said zero lag on any car. Wow. So I guess there's no more need for a, um, a supercharger or a naturally nope. aspirated nope. engine. It will get rid of that straight away. Yeah. So there's a lot of things it will kill off in the process. Of course. Yeah. Be very smooth. So obviously you can, you've been here a few times before. You kind of you know the layout of the area as well. So you're not kind of trying to learn that on the go. So you're very smooth out there. Is there anything uh, like in particular you wanted to improve on today? Because you've been here before. Was, yeah. it, was it like wet circle? For, um, yeah, wet circle. I uh, I'm definitely. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm rubbish at drifting. Okay. So I would, I would like to get better. But also um, on the main circuit. Uh, I mean, I know, I understand you guys are all racing drivers, yep. but I would quite love to, if it's all right with you, if you could try and push me as much as possible. Okay. So I wanted, because I remember um, last time I went out, um, on the last few laps, the uh, the instructor, he uh, got in the driver's seat and oh, went yeah. down the track, yeah. and it was amazing um, just how much power he applied through the corners. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just unbelievable. Yeah. So I'd, I'd quite like, if it's all right with you, to push me as much as possible so that we could get the corners as fast as yeah, possible. Yeah, it's fine. I can kind of yeah. point you in the right direction the lines and stuff. Um, what time of year was that? Was it quite hot weather? Um, it like It was, yeah, I mean, it was It was this time last year, basically. Um, okay. But it was, yeah, it was sunny, yeah. Okay. Well, I, the reason I asked, um, different times of the year, obviously different weathers mm. can be massively dictate the grip of the track. I see, yeah. Um, Summer, like you know, in summertime, last summer especially, it was what 32 degrees for five weeks, eight, eight weeks. It just didn't stop, it was just relentless every yeah, single day, yeah. beyond boiling hot. Um, there was so much rubber on the circuit, even if you didn't know the racing line, you could see the racing line, it was black <laughs> everywhere, black. And um, so, yeah, the, the speed difference, say from then to now, corner wise, could be six, seven miles per hour. Oh, yeah, that's uh, hard, yeah. Then it's only this last kind of week or so it suddenly got cold. Actually, it's yeah, last yeah, Sunday. Nice. Technically, British summertime. It's gone, oh, that's it. Now it's freezing cold. Yeah, I've and been the there. Fog and the rain. Yeah, of course. And there's snow even in summer. Yeah, I see. Yeah, Midlands got snow. Yeah. What we can do? We'll come off into this lap, and we'll make our 
closer. Now, where you're sitting, what I'd recommend is getting that wheel back slightly closer to you. Yeah. The north so track, yeah, we're going to go just out here. What we can do, we can, it's not behind, we can stop here a second if you want to do your steering wheel. The north track is slightly more demanding in how much you're turning the wheel. You'll find where you're sitting, you're quite laid back, which is fine to do, but you'll find it gets a bit of a stretch for that. Yeah, okay. So, if we sit here for a second, if you like turn that steering, let's say as much as you can, having your hands fixed, turn it from the right, see how like, your arms get quite stretched out? Yeah. Ideally, if I was to do that for you now, oh, I would so. have mine about there and a tiny bit lower. And now you're just fine. Yeah, yeah. Your general, general rule of thumb, you want to be able to take your hands off on your leg and just, the wheel should be there. You don't want to have to kind of reach oh, out or reach up, it should just be almost straight onto it. And you normally find that's okay. Another way you got to see people doing it is the whole wrist on top of the wheel. Oh, they put their wrist course, out yeah. and then it's okay. And I normally find comfort's a big thing. And you've got to think to yourself, if you're in any kind of like endurance race, you don't want to be in a position where you are having to reach for the wheel, having to lift your arms up. Yeah. It's physical enough as it is. It's not alone yeah, you like like this all the time. If your seat's too low or the wheel's too high, so you kinda of want it right in your lap. So as soon as you lift your arms out the the wheel's there. And okay. it just just reduces your fatigue as well. So yeah, now, we can we can uh, we'll work on some bits on the track then. So if we turn right down this main road and then we'll head down to the main circuit. That V8 run. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Honestly, AMG make the best tur sounding turbo. Yeah, track. they've always done a good job on the engine. Oh, no. fantastic. So, sorry, uh, where were you? Where so, it'd be you? right where that glass shelter is, oh. just there. The trick with this one, as you turn in, you've got to like, resist that temptation to cut straight across. Mm. That's the exit lane for cars on the track. Oh. So, they want to come out there. You've got to do like, the road version, like the real long winded way in, because the day you go straight across is the day someone wants to come out. Um, and where it's blue and white barriers there, they can't see on the way out, and we can't even see them there. So before you know it, you're in a big one. That's one of the hot laps. <laughs> the hot laps. So what you'll find out there, there'll be cars out there doing hot laps. So if that car happens to absolutely reel you in, yeah. don't worry about it. We're cruising on the left-hand side. Now the nature of these corners, obviously you've been here before anyway. Yeah. If you look on the exit of the bends, you can see all the marbles, all the tyre oh, yeah. pickup. Depending on when you come, it might, it might have been swept that day, you might not have seen it before. It is, it's well and truly here. Um, what tends to happen, if you run yourself simply too wide, you'll go over those, and all those big lumps of it get stuck in the tread pattern of the tyre. Oh, well, and you end up with a really rough feeling wheel. Too wide here, you, you really do pay the price for how it affects the steering. Okay. Do you watch any kind of racing? Um, Formula One. Yes. Okay, so they always talk about the marble yeah, all the time. I think that, yeah. And all we're going to do is we're going to lift this hot pattern car past. So when we come around this corner, there's some broken white lines. Yeah. If we just run ourselves over these lines, um, you should pass fairly sharp. <laughs> if we sit here, there's actually another one coming, and then you'll clear them. So, um, this kind of time of day, they have a, one or two hot lap cars out there, just purely taking people around. Yeah. So you're more likely as, as well. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So when I talk about the marbles, the tyre pickup, what happens then when the F1 car hits it, when it's slick tyre, you get all that stuff sticking to it. They will then slide around. Within two or three corners, it's gone. Oh, it's yeah. burnt it. Yeah, it's ripped it straight off. A treaded tyre suffers a little bit of lack of grip. stuck in the tread and sometimes you can even hear it sound it's a horrible sound to it so the main thing is stick to the line and typically it's that corner that does it it will go in too fast and just run them out all the they become a very very expensive race for food. <laughs> just hoovering up all the dirt that you don't want so when it comes to obviously cornering you've got the general just to, anyway, it's a right hand corner, you start on the left, because the left, you're on the right. Um, 
this corner here typically can catch you up because it's down your braking. Oh. You don't actually realise until you walk the track how downhill that is. It starts off quite straight and it's the last 40 feet that really drops away from you. It's a, it's a hard one to work out. And also don't forget the heavier your vehicle oh, of on, on a downhill element, yeah. every car is affected differently. Equally, they're all the same on the flat, it's the same principle, but even more so down the hill. And you see that last bit just kind of sloping away there. Yeah. Yeah, I, did, I never realised that. James. Yeah. How if you, if you walked it, so the first, I'd say 60% of the corner, Nothing at all, it's just flat. But the last part, you've got a tennis ball just on the floor in front of you, you can quite quickly roll away. Wow. It's that much of a slope. And that's also not rare. It's, where a lot, yeah, it's easy to kind of break a little bit too late, just a touch too late, what you would think is a tiny bit, but it uh, exaggerates it massively because the track's falling away. Equally, like, a, like an off camber corner, if you go too wide, it looks like you've gone into the corner and taken off around too fast. And you could have gone in. Yeah. Tend too fast. So, if you were a manual gear check, did you go manual last time? Did you ever have a chance uh, to do that? You did a bit, I think, not yeah. that much. Yeah. So, the manual gear change is really good. It, uh, you can, it can really help in the braking zones. Okay. Oh, it's, of course, yeah. yeah. What well, you've got to take into account braking, yeah. the car doesn't know what you're going to do. Why would you want that? Yeah. The car that's driven before. Was that in one race? 
recently. The uh, the Lamborghini Urus, the oh, SUV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there's that around Millbrook. Oh, wow. I don't know. That like. Oh, an absolute <laughs> weapon. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome machine. <laughs> Considering the size of it. Yeah. And you think, it doesn't look like a track car. You wouldn't look at it and go, track car. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah. It's, it's got like like 26 inch wheels or something ridiculous on it. Um, yeah, the calipers are as like as, as big as bigger than that steering wheel. Um, oh, wow. They're just everything on it is massive. You're really high up, but it is a quick car. But it should be for the money. That's what you're paying course. for. It. Yeah. But I but still. The, yeah, but what you were saying. Yeah. The, the, oh yeah. Is, yeah the value to the common. Yeah, that's I just I, that's ridiculous. I, I don't like it. I think at one point I uh, I went for a downshift. Out, just giving the windscreen a good clean <laughs> because it, you end up fumbling around initially yeah. because you're going going for the upshift and then you want to take your hand off the wheel go for a big leave on the right which kind of defeats the object in my eyes but like parachute bolt it should be there not you're hunting for it actually, actually yeah exactly it's, uh, yeah. apart from that it drives beautifully 650 brake horsepower yeah. 4 litre V8 twin turbo. So they're all going along those lines, this 4 litre yeah, style. Yeah, of course. Style. Emissions again, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. They're getting just under the emissions, but emissions will get tighter and tighter and tighter. So yeah. we know they'll go, yeah, that'll be a, a 3.2. Oh no. I, I just don't want to lose the V8. Yeah, I quite often get asked the question, but yeah. will I go for the SLS or 
a GT, not so much GTR, GTs, and Mars is also the SOS. For feel factor, oh, I see. Yes. We can touch it. Yes. Hydraulic steering. Super. Yeah, yeah do you are. I'd say actually pretty heavy. But it wasn't yeah. for you couldn't just do that. You're probably muscling it around. But it's a nice thing. Yeah. yeah if you're driving it hard, you kind of want it to be a lot yeah. heavier. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it was a machine and a half to really, really drive. And you know, when you got back in, you knew you'd been driving it. Your arms are aching. Oh, yeah. But uh, the GT went to the kind of electric steering rack. A bit lighter. Yeah, of course. And, uh, and, it, and it was, you couldn't program it either. You could program that actual oh, element of how light do I want it. It's just light, and that's it. Um, yeah. yeah, the GTR is definitely heavier. Oh, I like that, yeah, that's good. With bigger tyres as well, you oh, go more yeah. weight straight away, yeah. just what they are. Uh, the start of the tyre, it's like a, almost like a cut slick. Oh, okay. It's not like a big chunky shredded thing. Definitely cut slick though. Because it's designed for that car, like a lot of manufacturers are doing now. Yeah. It's got its own tyre. <laughs> and if you deviate from that tyre, you're not getting the handling it should actually have. Then, then there's a problem though, I mean, what, what do you do when you need to change tyres? You can only stick with one brand? Or? Yeah, yeah pretty much. much. Oh, wow, yeah. Okay. In, until, until perhaps another manufacturer brings out that, uh, that size. Sometimes it's on size. Oh. We had a scenario where the new E63 come out, and uh, the tyres on the rear, the tyre we actually wanted to put on it wouldn't fit. Physically wouldn't fit. It's just, it's just got yeah. some odd, odd size rim. The tire it come with, which anyone it did fit it. So you, you're yeah. opened up to that element. Is there any particular areas that you think that you know perhaps you're doing? You're not turning on an arm, or you're not breaking hard enough. Um, What's, what stands out to you? Uh, I think, yeah, braking definitely. Mm. Um, I need to work on that. Another thing is, um, I actually feel like um, I slightly understand what you mean about um, manual gear shifts. Yeah. Because sometimes I put my foot down and it, and it goes down again. Yeah, yeah. It kicks down. Which is good. manual, you yeah. in the So perhaps it would be a good idea to start doing some um, yeah. manual shifts. When it comes to um, this, I'd say the C63, the next one we're in, yeah. is actually a better car to. Oh wow, really? This, yeah. Don't get me wrong, it's fantastic for it. I think, well, like driver training wise, you get more out of the C63. Yeah. Just the nature of the car. Well, I suppose this is more, I mean, it's more luxury focus, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, and, really and it's fast, it, don't get me yeah. wrong, it's very really quick. Yeah. Um, if you look at C63, if you look at, at that market, what cars it's in, it's up against, we're talking about M3s. Yeah. And things like that, so this, that type of car is always about pushing hard. But definitely, if you want to try manual gears, we can do that. Sure, I just I don't know what gear I'm supposed to be. So, to be you're, you tend to get an idea just by feel factor. So, typically, if around this track, third and fourth, you may squeeze it like a second gear. Okay. Somewhere like the most right handed gear. Not many of them. Yeah. But typically, it'd be third because the car's got so much torque. It's not all, on these turbo engines, yeah. it's not always about high revs. Of course, you've got a lot of low-end torque. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you are faster by changing up, rather than just screaming the engine. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, could actually be slower. Yeah, because the, the torque um, peaks, doesn't it, about 5,000? Yeah, exactly, yeah, whereas yeah. the engine yeah. physically revved to a good 7. Yeah, but it's not really. No, it's, yeah. it's still pulling, but it's not. It's past its peak zone. Mm. If you looked at it you know, on the graph, you'd actually yeah. see that you're dropping off quite heavily. Um, that's the benefit of electric motor, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Instant max torque. Straight away, as soon as you rev it, it's, it's already up there. So, uh, should we go into manual? Yep, so, manual transmission is now. So, the left paddle is down, right paddle is up. And I believe that GTR is a bonus. He was just here. No, she's come on. Yeah, he's come on. So, we come around here, we're running south wide again, we'll let the GTR hit fast.
So yeah, now when you're in manual transmission, go down the gears and on the same kind of rate as if you were in a hydro power box. Okay. So if you're going down more than one gear, then you just go down, down. Guess what? You're not going to get the same gear. The car, whereas electronic gear changes, it will analyse, it will look at the gear you want, look at what speed you're doing on revs, and might go, that doesn't match. So you simply Uh, 
CLS 63 yep. with the 5.5. Yeah, and I have to say it sounds a bit different to this. Yeah, they do. It does, I yeah. think this was probably the most vocal of the 55 engines. It really was. Yeah, definitely a lot more. Uh, which is unusual actually, because you think it'd be a bit of a tour run. Yeah. Perhaps with the open and stuff in it, and they want you to hear all that. Um, but yeah, definitely different. Which is quite nice because every single model is different. Yeah, I like that. It's distinctive. Yeah, they're yeah. not just, yeah. oh, it's all the same car with a different shell. Yeah, one looks round, one looks square. I like that. It's, that suits you.
but even then you need quite a lot of throttle control because every part of the inner circle, as much as it's still wet road, you dry it. So when it's drying, you tend to feel grip change more. I see. Yeah, you get sudden traction. Yeah, it's sudden. Yeah. And at the bit of there might be a tiny bit slippery out. There you go. Good. So the man of ship definitely is the, the way yeah. that you're talking like performance wise. That's definitely. The thing. <laughs> That's cool. But if you we're doing another lap out here, I'll finish this and do another lap at your speed, then we'll cool it down for a lap. Last time I came around, the um, instructor said that uh, he drove the uh, the GTR around Silverstone. All right. And he said that it was almost as fast as the AMG GT3. Would, would you say that's really yeah, good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Road car. Yes. Yeah. 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 You probably find it was within a, a second or two okay. of a full blown, you know, legal race car. cruise around for a lap okay. and then um, just cools it down before we kind of head off because what happens typically we go here and then go to the acceleration area and you oh, go I from a, the car's absolutely roasting hot and you go straight to a standstill yeah. and nothing to cool it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly especially today where it's that little bit um, chilly anyway it will just this lap will cool it nicely brakes don't sit there absolutely overheated and cooking themselves away yeah they do always say you should take their own cars on uh, track days and stuff they beginners forget to cool down oh, cars, see it all the time. Oh, I, I work at tracks all the time, it's all you see. Cars coming in, they come past and they stink. Like that yeah. heat smell. Oh yes, of course, yeah. Really, oh, it gets back in throat. Oh, really? It's really acrid oh. smell and then, um, yeah, and then you'll, you look at the brakes, they're smoking away and like they're right on the point of like combusting. I see, yeah. And, and it, 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 it just kills the mass because it absolutely destroys them. Yeah. They're very hard to do a slow down now. Just cool it. Do, do turn one, turn two as you would, and then cruise it. That's a good drive. Yeah, that was brilliant. That was good. So, what we'll do, if we go left here, and then we'll want left again, and we'll turn right where those blue cones are, can't we? Yeah. Okay. Um, so for this one, just to kind of give you a bit of a helping hand, we'll go normal auto gears. Okay. So if we cut straight through, we've got lane three over there. Now, park stuff just there. Good thing about this area, we could do multiple stuff on it. So this, the SL actually, is very, very good because the center of gravity is quite low, isn't it? Yeah. It's probably that much lower than like a 663. Um, nature, obviously, is quite heavy as well. At one point, if I remember correctly, about five years ago, so the, the previous models, at one point, the SL was actually the heaviest, heavier than an S-Class. Less, because okay. of all the folding roof. Ah, uh, of course, yeah. You've got all the mechanism. I don't know if you've seen it, but it is incredibly intricate. You look at it, you think you need a degree at NASA <laughs> to make that and make that work. That's why they all have the uh, fabric roofs now, isn't it? Or the, yeah, uh, yeah, some of the fabric roofs, and it's, it's, it's lighter as well. But yeah, when you look at the, the how much the oh, machinery is there, 
it comes out across plate. Yeah. yeah. And even all this as well, as, as light as it is, it's it's still got a lot of weight up there. And doesn't the car lose some uh, rigidity yeah, as well? It's yeah, so, so yeah. a lot of the time you're flying any car that has an open top element, yeah, so um, the chassis is reinforced more. Oh, so it naturally it's slightly heavier and may have a slightly different handling characteristic. The one that was a solid roof, and you, know, you can't even, even though this is still a metal roof, yeah. one that doesn't have an option for it. Um, but in all honesty, modern cars now, you fairly regular. Uh, so at this point here, do a bit of slalom. You've got these yellow discs on the road. So there's four of them before the two orange cones, and other four afterwards. None of them are lined up, none of them have got the same gap. Okay. <laughs> so it's all about driving on the moment. Right. You've literally got to see it and drive it. They are not fixed to the floor, so every time they get clipped, they move. Could be two inches, could be two feet. So if you clip the whole lot, it'd be a different slalom than the next time. Chances are you'll clip them all over again. So head down there, 25 mile per hour, and see what you think. Go past the first one, and then turn the left. So the first gap, so it's the turn left now, and it sets up the sequence for these orange cones. So we can show you like different modes, what the effect is. Okay. And that's a good start doing it, how you are. That continuous lock. That's good. So one car at a time on here, so all we do, curve round to the left, down the main road, loop in track here. Yeah, how you are steering is almost perfect because I, what can happen, you get a lot of drivers that will come down and they're a bit too kind of jagged on the steering. Oh, and they, yeah, they're yeah, be straight. Southern movements. Yeah. Time it in such a way that you never straighten it. It's always one into the other. That's the most flowing motion you're going to get your hands on. So that's an like, yeah, extremely good way to start off. Yeah, no, I've, I've been told that many times by um, racing instructors to uh, definitely use a smooth steering. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Smooth steering is and you can time it. At the end of the day, like, you're the person behind the wheel, so you can decide to steer at this point, and by doing that, it will allow you to just keep a continuous steering um, method rather than yes. hard right, straight, left, straight. So once that car is kind of covering that wheel, it's clear. It's easy to think, oh, that's right, I'm, he's miles away from me. You never quite know. Yeah. I've seen so many cars park up and think, oh, what is this button doing? And having a good old chat through it. We're coming down at warp nine behind them. Never I do. So we'll try again, and we'll go suspension setting on the sports mode, and then see what you think. The car will just naturally have a little bit less roll now. So the, the effort you put into the steering wheel is worth more. Oh, wow, yeah. Well, that's amazing. Yeah, it's worth It's a huge difference. Yeah. So it's a fair difference, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot different. And it just allows you to perhaps lean on the car a bit more. Your, your most defining factor is body roll. Yeah. You're turning into a corner and you've got a you know, big SUV bolted to this same oh, chassis. Nice, yeah. You'll be leaning everywhere, especially if you stick 50 kilos of cement in the back of it as well, yeah. just to make it real bad. Uh, right in the corners, so it really leans over. Yeah, you do that, it's not worth an awful lot because the body is so busy rolling around, you don't actually get much of a turn. This inherently is a good car for that because it's low. As, as heavy as it is, it's got size on its side. I mean, look at our, our roof line compared to him. Yeah. Well, We're probably, what, our heads a foot lower than what they are? And I guess the GTR is even lower than this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> GTR roof line's probably there. Well, it's up in. And it's the, where it looks makes it look lower again is the, the angle of the, of the oh, yeah, windscreen. It doesn't even start about here. So it's very high rake but small. It looks like a race car. That's the reality of it. You're looking too fast for us. Like in this strawberry race and sunglasses. Cool, so we'll go again, but this time we're going to go Sports Plus okay. and see if you can feel any differences. So you can really start to kind of throw the car through.
feel good? Yeah. Apple was pretty planted? Very good, very yeah. good. Did it feel any better, chassis wise? Yeah, it did. It felt a bit stiffer, yeah. But, um, yeah, there wasn't as much roll as. Now, the interesting thing with this one is a bit of the odd the placebo effect. So, a lot of people will naturally think straight away of Sports Plus better on every element. The SL has sport suspension or comfort suspension. Okay. That's it. The, the, the other cars have got one and two. <laughs> okay, I see. So, <laughs> as well as asked, because everyone's like, oh yeah, I can feel the extra pace. Like, so, I couldn't feel that. <laughs> all right. No, but, all it is is what you're feeling is confidence. Yeah, oh, okay. So, now we'll go back to sport, <laughs> and now we we'll need to throw it in even harder than what you were, and it will be better. Famous last words. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is because everyone just naturally assumes that the whole car gets better and better. But reality is, um, what you were feeling was still that's just you improving. But, but also, um, I thought Sport Plus was the, um, the, the fast throttle response. I just feel, felt like that helps as well. I just, through here, or I don't know, I mean, just going through the um, yeah. I don't know, it just gives me more confidence because I just I don't know, yeah. One does. thing you can try. You want to try and, and do your speed as if, rather than going like power, turn in, power, keep one continuous throttle, you tend to find at the very end of the run, actually it was just a bit quicker. Then loads of power, loads of brakes, because now the car is like nose diving into the bends. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll try and Sport Plus again. We'll see back on Sport if we can throw it in harder than what we thought okay. was actually a more stable shot setting. This could be us there, come on. We'll, we'll, we'll get on the next car if you want. <laughs> B180D. Ah, oh, alright. <laughs> you don't want a GTR, do you? Nah. B180D is much so, faster anyway. I can show you the economy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sounds, uh, sounds fun. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just get you in today's thinking of cars. Power, you want, you want power, <laughs> you want eco. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. You want MPG is what you're after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that car there, that's doing the hot rides. So nice. He's just going to blast through quick. He may take off in lane two. Typically lane two oh, would be, suddenly, yeah, yeah, it'd yeah. be the, the veering around, but he may just blend across. Do you guys ever have drag races or not? No, they never, never do it. I guess it's not really long enough, I suppose. That's the thing, and yeah. as fun as it would be, where it tapers down into one car exit point, Oh yes. before you know it, you've got cars that are just going to be going, colliding. Yeah. It, it will happen. Yeah, and I've also seen videos of, um, I think VMAX ones, which go wrong, like someone is in real drag car and suddenly they oh, start Oh really? I know I've seen those. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. When you get in drag racing, yeah. you get the drag systems, I mean, look at there at a professional level, they'll go down and have some little little issue and end up going right across his lane and putting the you know, 10 million pound car on the wall. Oh, Never right. ideal. No. Thank you for your very generous. <laughs> cool, so we'll head off through there. So this same as the last time, big steering, more speed. Go on, more speed. There you go. And just keep on increasing the speed. We're going to get faster and faster and faster. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Told you not. Yeah. It's the, the placebo effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. What I should have told you is actually this is the worst handling version. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, it's not really. But, um, it just goes to show you, doesn't it, that actually the car has so much in reserve yeah. that it's a case of you're not maxed out. The car always got more to give but the, the driver generally has even even more so because you're, you're not at the point where you're driving five days a week yeah if you're driving five days a week you can jump in any single vehicle and just light it up instantly yeah I'm, I'm always amazed especially in these modern cars how much speed you can go into a corner with yeah that's far more capable than I, I ever thought yeah. oh they're outrageous what you can turn in yeah. you go back to be fair even our previous version of SL I don't think it would I think you'd be very close to the limit then of not getting around. 
a while. It's one generation back. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they've changed a lot. I mean, if you were to make two generations of road, very, very expensive suspension. It had mag it's called magnetronic suspension. Oh, magnetronic. And, yeah. and magnetic particles within the oil. And when you like break sports, it would effectively turn a magnet on. Okay. And attract all the particles, making the oil more dense, stiffen the shock. But uh, as quick as, and they were good, but it was they were very expensive. And um, I think when it comes to like, as I got a few years old, you don't want an oil leak at one of those. Yeah, oh yeah, of course. You can't pop to Halfords no. for your, <laughs> your litre bottle of magnetic oil. You're not going to be finding that on the shelf. Yeah. I'm sure it's a... Uh, it's going to have to be replaced on the Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be a, a decent price tag on top of that one. <laughs> yes, of course. So suspension-wise, you get an idea. Yeah, you could push the car hard, can't you? You're probably fine then. You're, that's kind of getting there. Yeah. Let's just say 15, 20%. You'd be like clobbering the markets. But as it was, you didn't touch a single one of them. So. Really we'll finish on look at no big place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But been hit with it. It's like if you win by half a car length, wins a win. Wow. So, what we're going to do now is straight line power. Oh, yes. So, everyone loves a bit of this. <laughs> yes. So, we'll go through the modes, okay? okay? We'll show the whole lot. So, comfort mode automatically kicks in, auto stop start. Uh, That's what we don't want. Horrible for you. Uh, offends everyone. Yeah. So, nice bit of power, get to the coned area, jump on the pits. What what, you to do. Yeah, orange, turn? blues, any of that zone there. So, well, sorry, sorry, the first, oh, sorry, the yeah, orange just down one, there. sorry. Yeah, okay. got the so give that a go, see what you think of that. Okay. Pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, fast enough, isn't it? Fantastic. Um, because the car can detect emergency braking, Okay. Puts the hazard lights on. Yeah, I yeah. So, yeah. But what you will also notice, and you won't feel your own car doing this, but you'll probably see others doing it, you'll see the brake lights flash. Oh, and when the brake lights flash, so you okay. brake really hard, they flash like crazy to warn the car behind. Just before you come to a halt, the, the, they'll still flash, but then your hazards automatically come on as well. But that isn't normal braking. That isn't, oh, I've, I've overshot and the co op's car park. Oh, they just break a bit harder. That's full on motorway, something wrong wow. in or out of the vehicle. Not a problem. Uh, we're going to lane one. So. That's the Conti tyre. So we're going to lane one here. The Continental tyre testing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that, isn't that mainly for um, the under 17 driving? Yeah, or? so typically if you yeah. see it around here, it pretty much is under 17 driving right. around. Um, what they're doing, so you've got that on there and that black car, they're like teaming up. So one of these cars will have like an all season tyre run. Got so it. rather than this whole winter tyres on and then having to perhaps store a second set of tyres to get them changed. Yeah, All the God. hassle that goes with it that initially people don't think about. The all season tyre is so much better than, than you know, that, that you can keep it on the whole time rather than having to constantly change it. So now we're going to go, so Comfort actually falls away in second gear. Okay. It's quicker than it was, that's second gear full away. So we'll go sports, this is now first gear. All right. <laughs> Go for it again, and then you feel the difference. <laughs> good, isn't it? Very good. So braking wise, never changes. They're all exactly the same. Um, ABS isn't switchable. It's it's on. That's it. There's no oh, there's see. no button around to turn ABS down or. Not like an AMG where you can actually. Yeah. Oh, you can't turn it off on it. Can't you turn it off? On no, no. Oh, so that's just traction control. Yeah. Right? You, so you basically, you can turn traction control off as part of the ESP uh, settings. So you can have like a sports mode or full off. Um, but something along the lines of the GTR, for instance, it's got fully on, medium, off. But then you can actually tune it to how much it clears. Oh yes, of course. Yeah. So say, yeah, for instance, yeah. sport is. 60% off and off is 100% off but you can only go actually I want it 70% off 
80. I want it just, just to trim a little bit. You can do that. It's got like a yellow dial yeah, in the center. Course. You would have seen for on, on the Top Gear episode that you yeah, show you. Yeah. Um, so we'll go Sports Plus. Obviously it starts getting real fast now. And the, on the new facelift models, they have the uh, the, um, the dynamic controls on the steering wheel as well. That's right, yeah. yeah. Making it a bit more kind of racy. Is it possible to do a um, uh, launch control as well, or does this not have it? You'll find, um, because the amount of track we've done and launches from here, it'll be too hot. Oh, okay. The cars are quite clever at not letting you blow it up, which is good in some ways. If it restricts you, it's always like for your own good. Because people will obviously, they do launch control coming out of the driveway in the morning. <laughs> Stone Cold engine, and it's like red line it. They would oh, try, yeah, and, they'd, they'd try and give it a go. Yeah. But yeah, at the amount we've done, because I can hear the fans going as well, it won't even try and do it. Cool, let's go. All your Sport Plus. Ready. So obviously there's one more mode left on this one. Oh yes. And this is the race mode. <laughs> Isn't that more just about um, loosening traction control a bit, or does yeah. it actually change the... Uh, yeah, this caps it again. Oh, okay. Everything's got a different map on it. By automatically going to the race mode, it puts it in the ESP Sport. Okay. So rather than if there was traction issue, rather than it cutting it, it will actually allow it to slip slide. Okay. So don't be surprised on this one, you'll feel the back end just have a little bit of a snake. Okay. And uh, you'll win those like that. Like you actually get less noise like that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, we tried it. You turn the angle, the way it's angled on those mirrors, oh, it kicks nice. the air straight at you. and. Um, you hear less engine, oh. you just get quite like a wind, a like a nasty wind, not even a knife wind. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, it's like, like super turbulent air. Uh, yeah, everyone does it, everyone's like, oh, I just want to hear that engine, like you hear nothing other than blasting air. Oh, um, so yeah, race mode now, uh, assist suspension, ESP is in sport. However, we could do that and then go, actually, I don't want it in sport mode. So you can customise the whole thing. Oh, okay. But naturally, it puts it in ESP sport mode. So give that a go. <laughs> Unbelievably quick. Yeah, that was yeah, better than nothing. Yeah. There's one more mode on it, and that'll be many gears. Oh, okay. And one thing I would say, race mode isn't good for driving around slow. Okay. When you drive down here, look at the revs. It'd be oh, like, you yes. just, like someone just forgot to change gear. Alright. Even going at yeah. a steady speed. Yeah. Effectively, you're telling the car to keep it in a higher revving gear. So the moment you touch the power, there's no, there's no kind of power delivery issue. Yeah. It's just instantaneous. It's but it's not so good for so just yeah. cruising them around. Yeah. You've got the worst mode for driving in London. Oh, It'd be yeah. forever at 4,000 RPM. Oh, that'd be awful. Then you see people perhaps drive down the high street, some perhaps some, some old boy, and like slip in the clutch like crazy. Oh, yes. yes He's doing like 6,000 revs at 10 miles an hour. The clutch is half in. <laughs> It'd be people be looking. You're like, what is going on with that car? It'd just be revving too much for its speed. So we go race that loosens up that manual transmission. Okay. Sweet so thing on the paddles. Uh, I don't know if I'm quick enough. <laughs> now what we'll say first 
per second, there's a slight delay on the gear shift. Okay. All the models have got, they do all like it. So they tried to shift a bit earlier then? Slightly earlier yeah. on the first, and then second upwards, you can go about another 250 RPM. Okay. And it will change in half a time. Alright. Go for it. They don't, um, unlike perhaps previous engines of types or normally aspirated, when you hit the limiter, you physically got that buzz, that pop, 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 like a limiter. These just blend out power. It just like hits a wall. Nice. So you feel that area which went for, yeah, for a that, second. Yeah, that was a bit, yeah. Yeah, but that's all you get. That's effectively the limiter. Whereas previous ones, when you get that, bah, 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 like you would, you would um, probably be popping a bang out of the exhaust. These don't do that. Yeah, it's turbo related because the normal aspirators did it all the time. Yeah, these ones don't. Yeah, I remember I, I drove the uh, 204 C63 um, oh, yeah. the first time I came here, and that, that had a nice crack. Yeah, yeah. sometimes it actually can be a little bit satisfying. You just grab a little bit of rev limiter between the gears chain. <laughs> Not as quick, but um, yeah. there's something about it. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah. And then the newer cars, if you. Um, you sort of keep them between, I don't know, 4,000 so RPM, and you just keep tapping the, the, the gas pedal, it sort of um, crackles and pops a bit as well. Or if, I've seen on some of the models, I'm pretty sure I've seen. What stands do you mean? Like like now you put it in park or neutral? Yeah, stands, uh, stands are all, even when you're driving, let's say you're going down the road mm. and you just let go of the gas and then just. Oh, yeah, 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 you'll get the overrun. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That's it, yeah. yeah the, um, the GTR is probably the best one for it. Oh, it's, uh, that's got a hell of a lot of overrun. It actually sounds like, like on board, like a blanc pan car. <laughs> when you when they lift off and you go, oh, boom, yeah. boom, 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 it's like that. Um, it's, an, it's the F1 safety car. Oh yeah, of course. So it's got to be quick to hold back the F1 cars. And even then, the F1 cars they're on the radio going, can you go quicker? Oh, of course, yeah, because <laughs> they're ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So I try once more, and then we'll head off somewhere else. So it's still in manual. Okay. Go for it. Slightly harder, but your belt's pulling. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, so that's part of the thing called pre safe The belt's oh, will yeah. yank in and pull you into the seat. <laughs> it will, the car will actually measure the time frame of you coming off the accelerator and, and where you were on the throttle. So you've gone 100% to full brakes within a nanosecond. Oh. The car then goes, something's wrong. That is not normal brake. That's not just, like I said, oh, I've missed my touch. Or actually, I'll fancy it across the coffee, I'll just stop real quick. <laughs> that is full on emergency. No, good bit of driving. Yeah, that was brilliant. That's really good driving. So, what we'll do, we'll head back now. Uh, I'm sure what uh, we'll head back and we'll get the C63. It's alright, just have a break for a few minutes. Yeah, it's absolutely. Yeah. Well, what we'll do, when we go back, uh, we'll get you a drink as well. Oh, have course. a break because it, it's quite yeah. demanding. Very demanding. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I could always advise on the break. So while I'm sorting some keys out, we can get uh, yeah, anything you want, really, tea, coffee, or something. And, um, yeah, I was, I was actually driving around um, Silverstone in, back in February. Yeah. When I drove the, uh, the the new Vantage. Okay. And um, there was one corner where you go around at 120 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And after after just a few laps, I could feel like, wow. Yeah, I'm so, done. <laughs> yeah. It's so physical. It is. It is. So it's a case down here, I'm finding a parking space. Now he's pulling out. Or so you just wait here or? Yeah, he does that, kind of gets a bit of a pinch point. Oh, okay. Where we are, on this boat, it's wide enough to get two by easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of us driving as well. So there should be a space up front now, which is actually really handy. Uh, Everyone wants to cross. So you got, you got a choice. Other side. So if we can back it in, that'd be fantastic. Okay. Oh no. The pressure is on now. Yeah. Everyone's gonna be watching. Oh god. And also you got the new you've got this camera on so you can actually oh, get a bit yes. of an idea how far you are width wise. Oh, yeah. You've fairly lined up pretty well. Where you want to be. 
Circle distracting everyone. Oh, I see. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> you got sun through my side. Oh, you might yeah. find you're so tight. Yeah, you'll yeah. Have a bit of an issue getting out. Oh, God. <laughs> this is this is worse. This is, it. this is this is horrible. It's all going wrong now. I'm glad everyone's looking up there. This is the final test. Yeah, this is. This is oh. It's not how fast you take this corner. It's can you park? <laughs> well, it seems that the answer is no. <laughs> Nice one, that's it. So you've got a part button just over, click that in. Excellent. So turn the end.